I do live in an area that has a lot of wildlife, and I, you know, much of my life I have. Man, I lived 22 years in Montana, uh, out in the foothills of a mountain range outside Missoula. I was teaching at the University of Montana, and uh, certainly had. Uh, I mean, I lived with all the the grand animals that still remain from the historic period in the West uh, in that spot. I mean, we had. I was there when we reintroduced wolves. Uh, to Montana and Idaho in 1995, and within about three or four years, there was a wolf pack on the slopes right above the house, and um, they began having litters. So we began having having wolves there. Grizzly bears um, would appear sporadically. Uh, they were their main range was just to the north of where I was, but they were steadily attempting to repopulate the Bitterroot Valley. And so about every two years, there would be a grizzly in the area. I had black bears uh, fairly commonly, uh, lions, of course. Uh, never saw a lion, but I saw prints. And tons of elk and, and deer and all that sort of thing. And in New Mexico, not so many where I live. Uh, I don't live in the foothills of a mountain range. I live out in the Pinion Juniper country, about 10 miles from the southern Rockies. And in that zone... You have a few mule deer. There are pronghorn antelope in the open prairies not too far away. Uh, but the primary animals that I see all the time, which is why, you know, back seven or eight years ago I wrote a book about them, or one of the reasons was it's coyotes. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I'm sort of constantly living with coyotes. Elk have such a distinct language in the way they talk to each other that there's elk calling championships i'm sure you're aware of these oh, yeah. uh you know jason phelps who's a, a guy that uh is well known in the elk hunting world has developed these amazing elk calls to mimic them and he he knows how to like get them upset he knows how to challenge them like it's really interesting when you see a, a master caller at work because the, the elk hunting that i've done most of it has been ambush like sneak up on them mm -hmm. and the, I, I i like that i like this you know the stalking and you know and trying to uh trying to get close and playing the wind but there's a lot of guys that they're so good at getting the elk pissed off that the elk would against their better judgment will come what the fuck is going on over there and whack yeah. And they get hit. Yeah, well, they, they're issuing a challenge, you know. And, yeah. uh, and at the time when elk are bugling, I mean, what they're bugling for are cows. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's a, if they sense there's a challenge from another bull, then they're coming to, to vie for access to the females. And that's how they get lured in. They also learn, too. So when there's heavy pressure areas, they learn that a lot of these calls are bullshit. And so they learn to shut up. And so in a heavily pressured elk area, sometimes there's yeah. elk around you and you don't even know where they are because you don't hear anything. One of the best ways to locate elk in the morning, you, you listen and you hear bugles. Well, I, I have not hunted elk. Uh, and, I mean, I, you know, I grew up in Louisiana, uh, a rural kid growing up in, uh, in the south, um, and uh, went to high school. In fact, I went to high school with the Duck Dynasty guys. I, I played football with the Duck Dynasty guys. That's awesome. Yeah, the the uh, older guy, uh, Phil, uh, was the uh, quarterback of the high school football team, and uh, there was one guy in between us, a guy named Johnny Prudum, was the next quarterback after Phil, but I succeeded Johnny Prudum as the quarterback of the high school team. So, And I even wore Phil's number. Number ten in high school. Wow! And I played the the younger uh, Robertson Cy. Uh, he and I played when I was a freshman and he was a sophomore. We played in the backfield, uh, or I was a sophomore, he was a junior. We played in the backfield football team. So I went to high school with those kind of guys and grew up in that kind of world, and you know, and hunted and fished, and I mean, but. Uh, our paths, I guess, kind of separated uh, at one point. They stayed in Louisiana. Sai uh, went off to Vietnam and returned. And, and uh, what I did was I went off to college uh, and other places and ended up, uh, you know, getting a Ph.D. and getting university jobs and going to live in places like Montana. So our worlds kind of diverged. Do you still keep in time. touch with those guys? No, I don't. I haven't kept in touch with them, uh, and I don't know if they're. You know, I'm certainly aware of them because I've watched their their show some. But 
Uh, I don't know if they are uh, aware of anything that I've done. I haven't tried to get in touch with them or anything. But Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you want some more current JRE clips and check out some of these stunning shirts. Link below.